right, Jazz. What do you got? According to the latest, the comp spike is being developed at UC Star Station SY920. Location undisclosed. Fantastic. So how do we disclose it? We could lean on your smuggling contact. Call in that favor. You know who I mean. Our friend on Jimson. Nice one, Jazz. I'll make the arrangements. Uh, All right, Rook. Next stop, New Atlantis. Your connection is Juan Dayu. She's got most of the premium UC smuggling routes locked down tight. If you don't piss her off, she should be able to sneak you past SY920's security. Just remember to count your fingers after you shake hands with her. She would be wise to do the same. I sure hope so. Cause she might be our only crack at finding a decent decryption device. Once Juan gets you past the guard dogs, it's gonna be on you to locate the comm spike. According to the data we have, it's in the prototype phase, meaning there should only be a single device aboard the station. Basically, you break it, you bought it. Hmm. Interesting. Well, don't take any chances. Nave is right. Just grab everything labeled comm spike that isn't nailed down. Oh, and one more thing. SY920 is a UC military installation. That means it's guarded by heavily armed troops. And we both know those idiots don't mess around. If you intend to turn the place into a shooting gallery, you might want to be sure you're hauling an arsenal, because you're gonna need it. She's got the clout to get you in the front door. They're gonna think you're part of a regular supply delivery. Beyond that, you and Juan are gonna have to put your heads together and come up with a plan. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. Okay, so I'm gonna arrange a meeting with Juan at Kay's place in the well. In the meantime, I'll make sure Jazz comes up with a solution to the electromagnetic atmosphere problem at Bannock 4. Oh, okay, you'll make sure. More like get drunk while Jazz does all the hard work. Typical. Privileges of rank, my darling. We'll discuss it a little later. And you, get the hell out of here. And don't come back without that comm spike in your cargo bay. The Crimson Fleet made contact with her about a year ago. We were searching for a smuggling connection in UC space. And her name kept popping up repeatedly, so I decided to put her to the test. Not only did she pass, but the results were off the charts. Made us both a ton of credits. That was good enough for me. Beyond that, I don't know much about her. But hey, as long as she keeps my gal bank account humming, she can keep all the secrets she wants. Hit me up if you got quest. I'm not going to show up to work for a week. Then my boss will see how much she needs me and give me a ring. I used to drink. Then I met Jake. Now I do. You might say safe. Take your neighbor's new recruit. Careful, the walls have ears. SY920 is one of my regular stops, so I already have the necessary approvals. Neva says you're after a piece of UC tech. So to get it, we're going to need to get you on board. I can do that, but I have conditions. Good. If I can be candid, for this job to work, we'll have to do this my way. We take my ship, and you're a member of my crew. 
But make no mistake, once you're born, the risk is entirely yours. This route is highly lucrative, and sacrificing it is not an option. Do not mistake us for amateurs. We will get the job done without sacrificing your route. I appreciate the confidence. I just want to remind you this job calls for more discretion than your usual swashbuckling adventures. In any case, when you're ready, meet me at my ship. It's the Jade Swan. And make sure you're prepared for the long haul. Once you're on board SY920, you can't come and go as you please. Only what I've been told. Get you on the SY920, get you out if I can. That being said, I can be a better guide if I know what it is we're after. So, it's up to you. Interesting. When we get to the station, I'll see if I can pull any information on its whereabouts. Hopefully that'll make for a smoother trip. Enough to be on a first-name basis with the marines working the comps. It also helps they want us to dock. A cargo ship means supplies, special requests, slates from home. In the void of space, a cargo hauler is a soldier's best friend. Less than you. And even if I did, I'm a smuggler, not a scientist. But if Delgado's after it, then I have a feeling there's a pile of credits waiting at the end of this job. So we better do it right. We'll talk more on the ship. Any adventure you can fly away from. Is, is that how the saying goes? SY920 is a regular stop for all of us. Fair warning, security in there is pretty crazy. As long as the credits keep rolling in, life's good. Alright, a few things to note. When we get to the checkpoint, UC military will be hailing us. Let me do the talking. Return your piece of cargo if you have to. Of course, I don't expect it to be. The less talking all of us have to do, the better. You'll get no argument from me. It'll be hard enough explaining why I have two new crew members. Now, like I said before, once we take off, there's no turning back until this job is done. If you need to take care of anything before we leave, do it. If you want to ask me any other questions, go for it. Alright, then get comfortable. We leave for SY920 immediately. All crew prepare for takeoff. Routing power to engine and grab drive. All systems go. Jump the SY920 from here. Don't worry about your personal ship, the fleet will make sure it's secure. You can take this time to prepare, just try not to bother my pilot while they're flying. Don't worry, Captain. I've spent half my life walking and chewing gum at the same time. I can handle a little banter. Sounds like you're putting in a request for double duty. 
Captain, I retract my earlier statement. For the record, I don't even like gum. <laughs> Noted. Just get us there safe. Ah, oh, hello. Roger that. Alright then. Entered secure UC military space. Identify yourself or you will be considered hostile. This is Captain Juan Dayu, cargo class ship ID UC 7938. Howdy. Requesting permission to dock. Identity confirmed. Prepare your ship for scanning. You're clear to dock at docking bay 2. Looks like we're clear. We'll talk more once we're docked. Yes. Hello. with the Jade Swan? Loading and unloading only. Stay clear of the military barracks. Cargo haulers are restricted to the cargo bay. You ever get a bee in your bonnet? Come to me. Hold up. This area is for SY920 military only. Rules are rules. Can't let you in unless you're military. That doesn't sound like Commander Natara. She's the type to add more checkpoints, not remove them. Ugh, again? This isn't the first time they've done this. It was the same last time Vogel brought on new pilots. Yeah, I get that this place can be a maze. All right, fine. You're good. Just be quick about it. That goes for your friend, too. We will be quick.
I don't recognize your face, Ensign. Are you new? Stop right there, Ensign. All right, Ensign. Why aren't you at your post? Who's your commanding officer? Only authorized personnel are allowed here. Only senior officers report to the commander. Something doesn't seem right. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember now. I'm glad you understand the position I'm in here. That's what I'm hoping. Fine, I'll let you go, Ensign. But as soon as you're done with your task, you should return to your post. trying to take a little too much on, literally. Get quick, Ensign. I'm busy with half a dozen spreadsheets that I'm pretty sure I'd rank you. And you know how the Commander feels about breaking the chain of command. She hates it. Well, you've got a uniform. Ensign Zaremi, is it? Just use the computer in the security office and look up the code based on your last name. Need your clearance code, Marine. All right, Ensign, let's hear it. You're clear, Ensign Zaremi. I assume the two of you are together? Yes, we are t together. Then you're both clear. Then they are clear to launch. Stop right there, Ensign. 
All right, Ensign. Why aren't you at your post? Who's your commanding officer? Only authorized personnel are allowed here. Only senior officers report to the commander. Something doesn't seem right. Why don't you just hold on for one second? <laughs> Maybe I'm just being paranoid. Yeah, I hope so. Fine. I'll let you go, Ensign. But as soon as you're done with your task, you should return to your post. If you aren't assigned to this level, Ensign, you need to leave. Two thousand years later. Dr. Vogel has put in a request for more personnel. It seems there was an accident. Ugh. It's always something with that doctor. Not to change the subject, but are we concerned about the potential leaks? No. Until you can provide more substantial proof, we'll simply monitor the situation at the cargo bay. For now, I've recommended to Dr. Vogel. Intercepting transponder data in the Hoffa system might be promising. According to autocorrelation models, results in risk increase by a magnitude of... Uh, two. But we won't tell Commander Natar. What she doesn't know won't kill her. Wait, who are you? Why are you in here? Did you not see the sign? Oh, yes. I've been studying decryption of all types for quite a long time. Probably since before you took your first crab jump. Signal protocol, quantum ratchet symmetry, interleaving data extrapolation. You name it, I've lectured on it. I've probably forgotten half of it, but I definitely knew it once. Don't you mean access to the ship? Because the comm spike isn't a device, it's a module. It's attached to a prototype in one of our docking ports. We're still in the testing phase, running decryptions across a variety of signal types, but the results so far have been very promising. It can even interpolate signal data lost in the retrieval. It really is a wondrous technology. Yes, 
It's not quite cracking the Enigma code, but it will give us a significant tactical advantage. We'll be able to infer everything from battle plans to meal consumption. Not that we'd care about that sort of thing, outside of the effects of diet on combat readiness. And yes, there are certain kinks to be worked out, missing parts, and the occasional traumatic injury here and there, but it's all part of the adventure. Yes, it's not the destination, but the journey that matters, <laughs> particularly when the destination is death. But don't worry. We've corrected the problem with the ship's life support systems, and statistical models show a failure rate of less than 2%. In short, I've requested a full squadron of these brave and fearless marines to be transferred to the station. They'll give the prototype a final run, and provided there are minimal casualties, we can present our findings to Mast. Splendid. That was fast. I thought I put in the request this morning. Normally my requests aren't given this much attention, let alone haste. It seems a tad suspicious. I see. It would have been nice if they kept me in the loop. I, I am the project lead, after all. True. And Commander Natara's checkpoints are very thorough. Too thorough, if you ask me, not that anyone does. All right, you've convinced me. You're the new task pilot. You'll need a uniform and a terminal password to authorize a flight and get past Natara's cumbersome checkpoints. The uniform you can get in the locker room area, the password you get from me. You'll find the prototype ship at docking bay 8. Use the password to access the flight terminals in the control center. And of course, best of luck. You are doing science a great service by undertaking this sacrifice. I also wish to be prepared for...
Say the word, and we shall be on our way. Prototype ship, you are cleared for takeoff. We'll begin the test on your departure. Recording test flight data. Please adhere to the scheduled flight plan and let us know if you have any issues. Welcome back, Rook. Looks like you got a new toy for me. Go on in and give everyone the lowdown. We'll take care of things from here. That's a real nice ship you brought in. I can't wait to tinker with it. Head on in. We'll take the ship to another port so Jazz can have a look. If you've got time to stand around, you've got time to do a job. Good work bringing back the comm, Spike. But talk to Juan first if you haven't already. The fleet, you either put up, shut up, or die. I am looking to start something, cause I'll finish it. Nice to know Neva was right about you. It's good to have a promising rookie with the fleet. I won't deny I helped. Let's hope the compensation reflects that, huh? You bail before I can make the offer, but I'd like to buy you a drink to say thanks. It's the last time I'm paying, of course. Because if Dalgado's right about Crix's legacy, you've earned more than your fair share already with that comm spike. Sounds like you're on board as a true believer. I have to admit, the way things are going, I'm starting to believe myself. Whether Crix's legacy is real or not, we have a job to do, and we will see it through. Anyway, I've kept you long enough. Now that you've had your drink and my debt is paid, it's time for you to give Delgado the good news. Jasmine tells me that you not only brought us the comm spike, but an entire prototype UC ship. I'm impressed, Rook. Very impressed. Should've taken the compliment, Rook. Dale doesn't give those out often. Juan gave us the full rundown of your little smash and grab operation. She gave you some really high praise. Said you were a pro. And from what I hear, receiving praise from Juan Dayu is quite an accomplishment. All in all, a job well done. Now, on to the business at hand. Jasmine, are you there? Yep, I'm here, boss. What's up? How's it going? I already have two of my crew tearing the ship apart from one end to the other. Comm spike shouldn't be too tough to extract. I'm looking forward to seeing what those UC techs have been up to. Keep me posted. All right, that leaves our electromagnetic atmosphere problem. And I think we've discovered a solution. There's a corporation in the city of Neon called Jennerdyne. They're responsible for the massive conduction grid that powers the city. We get our hands on their electrical absorption tech, 
and Jasmine swears she can tame it to handle Bannock 4. you damn right she can. My girl can piece together a jump engine with her eyes shut. Literally, I've seen her do it. Lost good money on that bet. All right, let's not get carried away, neighbor. Now, why don't you give us the info on our neon contact? You get to meet up with the lovely Estelle Vincent. She's had her deft little fingers on the pulse of neon for some time now. Whatever info you need, I guarantee she can get. Estelle is one of the most reliable captains we have in the fleet. If I want something done, there's none of the typical bullshit. It gets done, and afterward we all split the cash. No, no, no. There is no getting along here. You are going to do everything she asks. Follow her instructions to the letter. She is valuable to the fleet. You piss her off and we lose her as a contact, you're going to be answering to me. We have dealt with more than a few of your captains. This one should be no problem. You did right by one. But she's almost as green as you two. Estelle is different. Estelle will be waiting at Madame Savage's place. I'd say don't keep her waiting. But chances are she won't mind. Girl loves her liquor. And keep your eyes on the price. Neon's one big distraction for people like us. So I want you focused. We are one step away from Quix's legacy, and we cannot afford any screw-ups. Tough not seeing any action, but securing a station like this is great. Anything, it's good to have you back. What can I do for you? Two reasons. First, Commander Akande is playing this operation extremely close to the vest. That means keeping prisoners under his own roof until this is resolved. Second, this is an undercover mission. For our safety and yours, we need to keep these prisoners out of the spotlight. Not really, no. I've learned to keep my personal experiences separate from the job. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate that you care. It's just that I don't feel like now's an appropriate time to be discussing these things. Let's just stick to the job at hand and concentrate on the mission. But, uh, maybe we can talk about it some other time. Okay. Let me know if you need anything else. It seems you had quite the eventful mission on your hands. You still have the Crimson Fleet's trust, and you were able to spare lives in the process. But you did so with an abundance of stealth and restraint. That's exactly what we're looking for in a CISDEV operative. Then you were most fortunate you coerced us into helping you. Not some half-mad spacer. Excuse me, sir. I hate to interrupt, but... There's still the matter of the comm spike to discuss. Yes, of course, Lieutenant. Time is short, and we should get to the matter at hand. Please give me your report. That all depends on what you've brought back from your mission. Aside from your eyewitness testimony, I assume you have the usual evidence that could lead to her incarceration? I can take it off your hands once we complete your debriefing. But at the moment, I'm far more concerned about the comm spike. With the acquisition of the comm spike, the fleet is one step closer to Crix's legacy. And the more people we arrest, the greater the chance that your infiltration is discovered. We're working against the clock here. So let's start by discussing the status of the comm spike. 
then it's just a matter of time before she reverse engineers it to fit the fleet's purposes. So what does Delgado have you doing next? Has he solved the Bannock 4 problem? The conduction grid? That's... brilliant. But is it actually possible? It's 80-year-old tech. Sorry, sir. The conduction grid is how Neon generates its power. It essentially absorbs lightning strikes and converts it to usable energy. It would take a hell of an engineer to modify the technology to handle Bannock 4's EM field. An engineer, like Jasmine Durand. That's the case. Inform our contacts on Neon that our operative will be touching down there in the near future. Absolutely, sir. And before you depart, I wanted you to know that your efforts are helping us gain interest among my superiors. They're finally beginning to believe that we can take down the Crimson Fleet and make amends for the UC's embarrassing mistake. Of course I am, but it's a calculated risk. The fact that our common enemy owes its existence to the United Colonies, of course. It was the riot at the lock touched off by Jasper Creeks that inspired him to create the Crimson Fleet in the first place. Thanks to your assistance, we'll be able to rectify that mistake, and MAST will authorize an all-out assault. It's long overdue. All right, I suppose that's all for now. I'll be looking forward to your next report. Good luck. And please, be careful. What can I do for you? We'll be here if you need us. It's tough not seeing any action, but securing a station like this... I've heard the technology in this... ...station would make the FC surrender before we even started it. Everything looks clear. Sir, if I may speak freely, is there reason for the harsh reprimand? As far as I know, I just tracked a little mud into the brig. Soldier, have you ever heard of Trenchfoot? Can't say that I have, sir. Well, they say guards on Suvorov would sometimes trudge through cold... There you are. I was wondering when you'd visit. Should give us a little time to catch up. Well, of course, what choice do I have? Thanks to my own stupidity, my second chance to return to the Crimson Fleet is long gone. And by the time I get out of prison, any hopes I had to return to that life will have fully disappeared. Yes, well, apparently that's off the table as well. Dryden tends to shy away from rehiring convicted felons. Well, anyway, glad you popped by to say hello. Now, if you wouldn't mind letting an old man get his rest, I'd appreciate it. I will have the commander relieve you of it. Yes, sir. So you're saying I should be happy that you took me out of the line of fire. I have to confess, I never thought of it that way. Last thing I intended to do with my life was go out in a blaze of glory on Navar Delgado's behalf. But at the same time, my freedom's gone. So I'm not exactly popping the cap off the vodka bottle and celebrating, either. Oh yes, quite aggressively. The legal team will very likely grind me into the dirt. There isn't much I can do about it. The amusing thing is, I don't even think they care very much that the heist went down on their ship. That's a given risk for them. 
I think they're more embarrassed I was able to gain the position as captain of the Siren under false pretenses in the first place. Uh, that's the last time I trusted him. It's nice to see a fresh face around here. You stop in whenever you... ...would like. Do you know why this place has stood for so long? I make sure everyone's comfy. I tell it like it is. And I don't take any shit. So, when did you stop flying the Swan, anyway? When the cargo became more valuable than the ship. True. The fleet's got us real busy these days, and we are making good money smuggling all this contraband. But if any time was the right time for a break... Hey, there's still work to do. I need to check with my contacts at the spaceport and find out what guards are on rotation when we leave port. Then it's back to the key to make sure Delgado gets his cut and to make sure he hasn't cut us out. I worry sometimes that being in New Atlantis, we're missing out on the big scores. I know that old dog has something big planned. I can feel it. Sheesh, that is a lot to think about. And here I thought the pirate life was carefree. Maybe for some people, but that's not how I work. Well, you feel free to plan our next moves from now to the new year. I'm all about living in the present and being where your feet are. That's fine. Just make sure to wipe those feet before boarding my ship. The commander appreciates the sacrifice you've made. Hmm. Glad to hear it. Let's see what you got. Finally. We've been tracking the Jade Swan for almost a year, but Captain Dayu somehow remained one step ahead. Every time we've scanned that ship, it's come up empty. Well, she's not going to skate away this time. Nice work. Find anything else? Okay, fine, fine. I know there's more out there, so keep on it. I'll be here if you have any more questions.